I objected to hearsay. Okay, okay which, no, which, no, call, let me which call? Which call? call? These calls as you Okay, well then why weren't we why aren't we taking that man's life is here? I believe that this honorable court is biased against Mr. Williams and or his counsel. And I ask you to consider recusing yourself. You're yelling at me in front of a jury for nothing. If true, I'll die right now. How about that, Judge Glamber? Day 46 of the Young Thug YSL Rico trial was off the rails. Detective Quinn briefly testifies to the officer-involved shooting we've been hearing about. The judge then screams at Brian Steele in front of the jury, saying he was unprepared, but he literally was not. Steele then responds and calls the judge bias against the defense. He makes a motion for the judge to recuse himself from the case because of this behavior. The judge instantly denies this recusal, but you're going to see later in this video why this could be an issue. He could actually get recused from this case. Brian Steele pops off though today. He points out all the bias bias that we've been hearing it gets interesting hit subscribe like the video right now here we go. So Yak Gotti's lawyer, Mr. Weinstein, filed this motion that says the state, after originally proposing a witness list of over 700 witnesses, has a list of over 400 witnesses as it intends to present at trial. To date, the state has presented approximately 40 witnesses since presentation of witnesses began at the end of November. At this present rate, it will take approximately until October of 2026 to complete the presentation of state's witnesses. Thus, the present trial will take well into at least mid-2027 to complete. This is comedic. It, it, it's impossible. This is simply untenable for the remaining 15 jurors or the defendants who remain jailed and without bond and the presentation of another 360 witnesses by the state would cause undue delay, would be a waste of time and would, and would amount to needless presentation of cumulative evidence. So essentially, Mr. Weinstein's saying we need to change something. They need to cut their witness list down. There's no way they're going to call 400. The jury's going to get impatient. It's just not going to happen. Everyone seems happy today. What's he eating? Got the green suit on and green tie. Looking snazzy. David Quinn. D-A-V-I-D-Q-U-I-N-N. -N. And here's Detective David Quinn, who was on recording, basically buttering up Adrian Bean and getting him to snitch. Remember, Adrian at one point said that he told him to lie and say Thug was in the car. Probably not the truth. <laughs> I joined the Atlanta Police Department in 1985 when I was 20 years old, and I stayed until 2019, so I did 33 years and uh, some change. After that, I got into the uh, true crime TV business, which is what I do now. My responsibility was to investigate crimes that involved deaths at the hands of other humans. They decided to let the Georgia Bureau of Investigation handle those shootings. I, I guess they didn't want the actual agency to investigate itself. Someone say something. I didn't, Your Honor. I said objection. Speculation. I will objection. Brian still objected, saying speculation when he, because he said, I guess. Everybody calls me old school. I will hold the objection, Mr. Shield. Why does he keep talking about what other people call them or, or other people are saying, bro? I feel like every case I work is a story. And I've got to report back, you know, the information from that story. What you do is you try to get as much as you can, and you miss things. I miss things on every investigation. And so you have to take your time to make sure you have it right. What type of evidence do you want, um, are you trying to gather as a part of your investigation? First and foremost, I want eyewitnesses. As I got older in the department, <laughs> technology became a useful tool. We've always had fingerprints. You want fingerprints, uh, DNA, something tangible that'll vouch for this person that's an eyewitness seeing something. I really like eyewitness evidence. A lot of people don't, but I do because the community that is the witness i don't like how he snuck in that he likes eyewitness testimony in front of the jury because that's pretty much the only thing they got thug in that car for is adrian being saying he's in the car and literally no one else and tell us a little bit about your um, interview style i try to keep my interview objection relevance. Oh, Mr. Sharp. objection relevance to his interview style I would imagine Brian still called for a sidebar because he doesn't want Quinn to talk about witness testimony like that. You don't want your interview to be adversarial. You want people to be calm and give you truthful testimony that you can verify later. Mr. Steele, you got to pose an objection and then you got to tell me the basis. Because selling your honor doesn't let Ms. Weaver know who you are. So please go ahead and objection and tell me your basis. All right, ladies and gentlemen, can I get you to step into your headquarters for just a second? Oh, he said I have a motion. Detective Quinn just said on questioning the district attorney, why is it important to develop a rapport with a witness? And the answer was something to the effect of to get truthful information. No witness, no witness can talk about veracity or truthfulness or believability of anybody, of anybody. That's what I tried to say at the bench. That's the entirety of this testimony so far. I'm moving for a mistrial on Mr. Williams because this gentleman interviewed a big witness in this event. The only witness that puts Mr. Williams involved in this event. And now it's important to get truthful information. I don't know how you wipe that out. Are you going to tell the jurors, ignore that last comment? That's what you're going to say? And I warned it. And I was at the bench and, and you did not want to hear from me more than you did. You told me to step back, but Your Honor, I, that's a, you know, I've been doing this too. I anticipated it wasn't that hard to do. I'm moving for a mistrial and I did it at the proper moment. Oh, there's always something with this trial, bro. So I was right. He didn't want him to talk about the veracity of witness testimony and he did exactly that immediately after. And now the jury heard it and he's moving for mistrial. Will it get denied? Yes, because the judge is not going to let that happen. Your Honor, as it relates to um, Detective Quinn's response, he did not talk about a specific witness, truthfulness or veracity. He said, in general, what I'm trying to do is find the truth. 
And that is what you do in an interview. You're determining whether or not what the person who's speaking to you is credible, they're providing credible information. Your Honor, even in this case, Detective Quinn already tells the agent, I don't think he's being fully honest. So he's not t- talking about the veracity of anyone. He hasn't even talked about any witnesses yet. Okay, she actually had some good points there, but still, for him to testify about that immediately after they heard that interview, it could sway the minds of the jurors. And we're going to ask you to deny. All right, I'm going to deny the motion. Summon our jurors, please, sign. But the judge just denied the motion <laughs> for mistrial immediately after the district attorney had uh, finished her response. I got a call because I was told by dispatch that an officer had discharged his weapon and I need to get to that scene. Like opening day, six flags. It's crazy. Fire engines, police officers, blue lights going. Everybody talking to me at one time, you know, which, which I'm used to, but this was this was a really big scene and it was really active. I got there, I wanted to speak to my supervisor and just try to figure out what, what was I dealing with here? Give me an overview. She gave me an overview of what was going on and indicated, I, you know, where I needed to go next. I found out that uh, Frederick Prothro had a serious gunshot wound to the back, which changed my thinking. I mean, I, we had someone who was actually struck. So a lot of my energy went to that. I also found out that it was Walter Murphy had gunshot wounds to the legs. They had both been transported to Grady Hospital for treatment. Um, to your knowledge, you know Agent Pete? I heard he had some injuries, but I didn't think they were significant based on what I learned on scene. I wasn't even sure at the time if he went to the hospital. Sneaks in, not sure that he went to the hospital just to fuck up Brian Steele's whole thing that he did go to the hospital. There are times when I'll actually take a verbal and write notes. Everything's not recorded, but in this case, his interview was recorded. He was concerned about his vehicle that he had uh, received from someone else. As an investigator, have you ever had the occasion to interview anyone who was under the influence of drugs or alcohol? Throughout my career, almost every day. <laughs> did Mr. Nava Flores appear to be under the influence of any drugs or alcohol when you um, met with him? Not at all. He was clean. <laughs> did his eyes appear to be glossy as if he was high or anything like that? I didn't see it. <laughs> Was he able to speak with you coherently? Clean as a bell. When you first met with Nava Flores, were you aware if he had given a different version of his involvement in the case to another officer? I did hear that. And based on your interview with him, did he advise you um, what he told that initial officer? Yes. Was he able to tell you why he was over at Cleveland Avenue? Yes, ma'am, he was. Was he able to tell you who he came with on Cleveland Avenue? Yes, ma'am, he did. They're talking about interviewing the guy that went to the YSL trap to buy weed or whatever with his friend and he was borrowing his girlfriend's car and then they ended up taking his car to rob people essentially so here's his interview with that guy that pulled up in the car to buy weed and they ended up taking it to rob people the reason i walked up here was because i had word that my car my girlfriend's car that i had borrowed this morning might be down here in the street all right i did not give the car to anybody okay well who did you allow to get your car Brian, my friend. He's the one that pointed me this direction. He's the one that had... Some guy asked to borrow the car. He let him borrow the car. If we keep going around the circle, we'll no, have right. a long night. Let's right. have a short night. Right. Let's no. get it done now, brother. Right. This guy, I gotta admit, he's really good at interviewing people to try to get information out of them and making them seem like he's their friend. The police are not trying to help you and they are not your friends ever if they're interviewing you. You need to ask for your damn lawyer. I've let him borrow the car. Brian. You let Brian borrow... Where are you when you let Brian borrow I, your car? I have just exited the door. So how many black people got in your car initially? Four. You saw four get in your car? Yes, there's four. At any point, have you ever erased any part of this interview? regarding Mr. Flores Nava. Not at all. My understanding was that another detective talked to that kid and he deleted it. Like another detective interviewed him first and for some reason was deleted. Did any patrol officers, detective, sergeant, lieutenant, captain, anyone um, from zone three or any other department ever advise you of any surveillance footage from the laundry mat um, that had any evidentiary value? No. So that was a big thing for the defense that there was all these businesses in the area and that no one got surveillance footage. But Brian Steele says they did look at surveillance footage at some point. Like there was like a group of them looking at one surveillance video. So it's like, why wasn't that ever given over or anything? I don't know. How much money did he inventory? $970 cash. That's all that DK got off uh, Dirty Red was $900 over this. Those boys got shot over $900. Think about how dumb that is. She said it was a female drive. And did that female driver have any particular hair color? I think she said pink. I'm not really sure. I can't remember okay. exactly. At this point in your investigation, were you now looking for a woman as a part of this underlying um, assault that you were investigating? Absolutely. Is that your hand that you were just referencing that's pointing at something in the ground? That's me. Yeah. What exactly were you pointing at? at that the was what was believed to be impact. <laughs> she laughed at his figure point what is he pointing at bro projectile from a gun bullet. why do you need to point why can't he just center the camera right on it like he did the pointing was so unnecessary i had a good idea of what happened in that scene uh, we don't just send arbitrary items to the gbi for testing so she's asking that question because obviously the defense lawyers are going to say why didn't you send this why didn't you send that you know lawyers nitpicking at certain things that are trying to get in the jury's heads like they didn't investigate it well so apparently it was him that interviewed this guy shout out thugger daily remember this witness right here that's the audio interview we heard uh it was detective quinn that interviewed him first but he lied at first so quinn deleted it apparently okay do you have any specific objections to those two calls not the third one Break on, as I told you. Yeah. I may not. I may not. But you're going to tell me that you know. So I will. All right. Um, follow your direction. Mr. Steele, 
Please don't try to engage me in conversation. You did. You're not prepared. Because if you prepared, you would have told me. Uh, you, 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 you invited this conversation. I did. I asked you if you were ready. If you were ready, you can say, yes, Judge, I'm ready. I have to do those two, those two calls. Now, if you're not ready, then go ahead and tell me you're not ready. And we'll go ahead. I'll, I'll go ahead and we'll figure out something else to do. Okay, this is all pertaining to some sort of jail call. Mr. Steele says he was he didn't have the jail call. And he just got it recently. Or, and now the judge has called him unprepared in front of the jury. And Grace is already, you know exactly what I'm talking about. No, 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 no,
no problem, no problem, because I think that's professional. One was a Google map that needs to be clarified for the record, and then a map with little dots, 0.4 miles, I'd never seen before. But I didn't do anything, Your Honor. I want to move the case. But when the court, it, it gives me no pleasure in saying this, I believe that this honorable court is biased against Mr. Williams and or his counsel. And I ask you to consider recusing yourself or don't do this again to me. This is inappropriate to me. I respect you, but what am I supposed to do? Sit there while you do this? I didn't do anything wrong. I did exactly what you teach me to do and the okay. courts teach me to do. Right. But instead, no, no, I got to finish this. I get told to this court, this court says by prosecutor Love that I'm not being candid with the court and I'm misrepresenting because Mr. Bean never went to the hospital at Grady on September 11, 2013. And Ms. Love has a document on the desk to prove it. I sat right in front of your honor at the, at the table, at the bench. And I said, I'd be careful what you say. That's not accurate. Ms. Love looked down on me and she said, it is accurate. You said, we'll take a break, figure it out. After the break, you didn't even bat an eye. Ms. Love said, yeah, I was totally wrong. Mr. Steele's right. He was taking a grade. If I would have done that and called another member of the bar, disingenuous, not truthful, no candor and misrepresenting, you would have had me yelling in front of a jury. You did nothing. You didn't even ask Ms. Love to apologize. I don't want her apology. I don't care about Ms. Love, but I care about the court. And now if you can walk in someone else's shoes just for a minute and see what you're doing to Mr. Williams, I'm not the one wasting time. I mean, the judge was wrong to call him unprepared in front of the jury, no matter what you think. And I'm going to show you documents in a little bit why that's wrong. Every day, ready to go. I am not wasting the time. I make a motion to ask you to please recuse yourself. I know it has to be in writing within five days. If you want me to do that, I'll do it. And that's go to another judge. But this is what's going on, Your Honor. Whether you see it or not, you're yelling at me in front of a jury for nothing. And then you won't apologize. And I did nothing wrong ever on these occasions or others. I'm gonna... He asked him to recuse himself. Dumb that down. That means get the fuck off the case. The judge. Go ahead and address your motion at this point in time. I'm gonna deny your motion at this point in time. Um, and also just direct you that I have the responsibility to control the proceedings in this particular in this particular circumstance. Sometimes uh, things get kind of kind of heated. I am not in any way in, in, in intimidated in insinuating that you are not professional. You are not prepared. But the things that I am bringing up to both of you, and I have I have fussed at both sides for this particular issue of not being prepared in the sense of, and the only reason it it, it, it affects the trial of the case is it makes the proceedings a lot longer than they should be. It takes time and, they, and that's what I'm kind of concerned about having been a jurist for a long time. You in no way offend me by, by raising any type of motion. You and the others here represent your clients well, but sir, I, I have to be able to control these proceedings. And you at times in these proceedings have not listened to what the courts told you and I certainly could have explored other options. I did, I'll tell you that much for what it's worth. You but, allowed a member of the bar yesterday, ask a witness, who constantly is committing respectfully, potentially perjury. Did Mr. Steele shut off and turn on the recording? I never did that. I wouldn't do that. And I didn't do that. Okay, and so sir, that's a, that's let me, let me sir, sir, that's I, a, I, I was confused why he was letting her ask questions like that to Adrian Bean yesterday. Like that was ridiculous. I would have said that question to about another member of the bar, prosecution, you would have come over the bench and said, how dare you? I, I sat there and I said, outrageous. You okay, denied the motion. But, I think three other people made motions to strike or to object. You denied, judge, I'm just telling you the appearance, if not the reality, is not good here. I'm, I'm being what to who to Mr. Williams. Okay, but to maybe you, to the other. Maybe you're his, you're, you're his advocate. Okay, and that 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 separate issue of whether or not you did what you did, the state accused you, the state accused you of that they have the right to at least inquire about whether or not that particular that happened. And whether or not it happened or not, I'm not making any comment on it. But it goes to bias. It goes to mis motives to misrepresent. So, so but that but, never happened. No but, okay, faith. but I'm, I'm not me, comment. I'm not commenting but, on that. That's for the jury. To, that's for the that's for the jury to decide. I asked the question about a missing recording that wasn't given of a statement made by Mr. Bean. And I know I, you told me. And I keep telling you. Know you told me. You said, if, does the state have it? They said, no. You said, nothing I can do. I tried to cross on it. You sustained an objection. Because it doesn't exist at this point in time. Now, if it exists at some point, I will, I told you I'd say it. One, I tell you, I, I apologize to you. And then two, I'll take corrective action I, I'm honored. against the party or, or the entity that um, failed to give you that particular statement. It, but the point is, everyone knows he spoke to the detective. But we don't, no, we don't. That's he all said it. You believe it. You honestly believe it. And that's, that's, and that's true. On September okay, but, 17th, 2013, on recording, Mr. Bean tells that to Detective Quinn. How is that far-fetched? Why would he ever say that? I lied to the other detective. Why would he ever say that? I mean, logic has to come into this courtroom at times. But you stop me from doing it, but you allow another lawyer make up that I'm stopping and starting a recording. If true, that's a pretty that's a pretty serious accusation. If I'll true, do. if true, I'll die right now. How about that, Judge Glamber? Bro, Brian Steele is putting his foot down. He's fed up. Bro just put his life on the line whether or not he stopped the recording with Adrian Bean. That is crazy. I don't care about her objection. I'm and, speaking with the court. I'm speaking with the court. Okay. I'm speaking with the court. Then you can uh, then you can say your My point is if you don't see what's going on, it's because you're not viewing it out of the lens but, but of Mr. a jury. But Mr. Steele, I can't do that. I have to I have to be the referee. Yeah. So the jury decides those particular issues of, of believability and credibility. You said in front of the jury, I was unprofessional. I'm not unprofessional. I think at that particular point in time, given the totality of what happened, that's what the court's assessment was. Sir, I, I am... But it was wrong. It's, it's it's a snippet in time. Mr. Steele, you're a, you're a very good attorney. I'm a professional jurist. I think that you know my job as a referee is to give you a fair, a fair trial. And that's, that's what, what I'm going to do. Well, I hope that's true.
But you just told the jury I'm unprepared, and I am prepared. I don't understand why you would say that. Both of you, I, and, and I'll level this against the state. Both of you, that's being unprepared because that I have to, I have to then listen to listen to this to rule on it. I understand, but I'm the only one that the jurors here the court take ire without an apology, without. Oh, I, I've taken. I think I've taken Miss Love and Miss Hilton and uh, her colleagues to task many times. No, I've heard you. Yell I, at oh, I've I've taken them to task as well. I've heard you say to her, "Stop interrupting me." Answer oh, that's question. that's taking them to task. The jurors never heard that. Ooh, I mean, it's a good point. I don't think he's ever really popped off like that on the prosecutors in front of the jury. I'll I'm also asking for a mistrial based on your statements. I think I made that clear, but I'm asking for a mistrial. Okay, now I'm I, think a fair, I don't think it's a fair forum for Mr. Williams. Okay. And I don't want to ask for a mistrial, but I have no choice when the court is saying what it said, and I'm not going to repeat it. All right, Mr. Steele. In terms of what, in terms of you know what, what I told you all already, we still have, are we still going through the, you know, I, I told you all both sides. I told you this just delays the trial. I mean, where I've got to rule upon other things. This still, uh, you've delayed the trial, Judge Glanville. What? Bros delayed the trial so much it's the worst schedule of all time. We're on day 45 and nothing's really happen the notion that there's a bias um i i'm not certain even where that's coming from given um the amount of tongue lashings we've received from the court on the state side so i would just object to um the bias is in the objections there's been so many times where objections happen for the defense that should have been sustained but he overrules them for you ask the open-ended question with a good faith basis for doing so and with an ability to impeach if there was a denial uh, of having said it so we didn't make that up out of whole cloth um, we wanted to make certain that all parties on the defense side had that in the middle of my redirect of Adrian B and to say that did not occur or preposterous or outlandish, completely improper, disrespectful. The state has done nothing of the sort. You scream the lyrics at tech and emphasize cuss words and the N word and bitch in front of the jury. You basically testify, Miss Love. Let's be honest here. Asserting something so that everybody in the ethos is asking, oh, where is this interview? Where's this recording? He's never seen one. He doesn't have a good faith basis asking for one. And yet he continues to put that question out there so that everyone in the universe has this idea, oh, the state is hiding something. Oh, the state destroyed evidence. Again, they sat there for a whole day asking witnesses about the destruction of evidence. That was, there's no evidence that anybody destroyed any evidence. Yet they stood there a whole day and asked someone about that. The kid, Luis or whatever, that the car was borrowed from said Detective Quinn deleted a f statement because the first statement he figured out he was lying. A witness said the detective deleted a statement. That's all it is. There are thousands of jail calls in this case. Yeah, so, Honor, hold on, hold on, hold on. Not for this case, for X5 okay, and 7 specifically. Okay, there are thousands of jail calls for this case. So well, Dude, today is off the rails, bro. There's arguing. So that's kind of, I just wanted your honor to understand. It's not as simple as just, we didn't listen to the chicken call. The chicken, bro, the chicken. I can't wait to hear this chicken wing jail phone call, dude. The facts got lost. The actor facts, I, I, I've listened to all the calls, the relevant calls. I've listened to them all. I know what the chicken call is. I know what the baseball call is. The issue is there's third parties making statements of fact, introducing statement of fact. We argue this. The state's position was it's non-hearsay because it goes to the effect of Mr. Bean, who will be a witness. I dispute that. I believe it's hearsay. That was the issue. Yes. You said, we'll take it up. Yeah. That's it. These jail calls are being played to make a ruling on whether it's hearsay or not. Call, though. Exactly. Okay. That's right. what, that was my objection. Brian Steele's a great lawyer. He's always clear and concise on what he wants, and he's just putting it down on the line for Thug, bro. This was a great hire for thug <laughs> okay all right um, they're both uh denied i'll note your objection and the continuing objection mr harvey they just denied uh, mr harvey's uh motion to sever his client because his client has not even been brought up once in this trial so far like in witness testimony he's just been sitting there for months on end <laughs> with nothing they are arguing about cooking chicken over the jail calls. I don't, what, why is this relevant? A third party speaking, I believe the voice is Courtney Bean. That is my belief. And she is saying um, outside of the court, it's being introduced for the truth of the matter asserted that Jeffrey Williams, known as Thug in that call, was worried about the lien, was getting the lien. I cannot confront or cross-examine Courtney Bean. So it was about them buying lien, essentially. All right, I'm gonna exclude 1035 to 1056. I believe it is, um, it's hearsay. So I'm gonna exclude it at this point. All right, they just argued for an hour about an out-of-court statement of a jail call with Adrian Bean and his wife, where his wife brought up lien and Thug worried about the lien, buying lien or some shit, and the judge is gonna exclude it. That's why, Mr. Steele, when I said you're not, you weren't prepared, it's not because I, I don't think that you are a worthy adversary or worthy, you're not representing Mr. Williams to, you, to, you, to your capability. I'm just stating that this is my, this is my concern. It is not directed to you personally as a, as, 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 as a, as a, as a unprepared lawyer. But that's literally what the jury is gonna hear and be like, oh, the judge thinks he's unprepared. So this guy seems like he knows what he's talking about on Twitter. He says, also worth pointing out that screaming at a lawyer without provocation in front of a jury is potentially recusable. And he cites Miller versus State where a lawyer said, sit, up, sit down and shut up in front of the jury. 
Also worth pointing out that when a judge angrily denies a motion to recuse, that can itself be a basis for motion to recuse. <laughs> so the judge did quickly deny that and he seemed pretty upset. An appellate lawyer looking at this transcript would see a strong basis for reversing a conviction, even aside from the prosecutor's baffling decision to tell the jury in opening that the defendant was required to prove his innocence. The prosecutor said that in opening statements. Insane. That's it for today. Comment down below what you guys think. Like the video, subscribe right now. Love you guys. Peace out.